Hello everyone. Myself Sujay Paul. I am an intern at UV Advocate. Today I will be discussing the grounds for divorce under the Hindu Marriage Act 1955. So let's start with this intro. In ancient times the concept of divorce was not known to anyone. They considered marriage as a sacred concept. According to Manu, the husband and wife cannot be separated from each other. Their marital tie cannot be broken. Later the concept of divorce came in the picture and established as a custom to put the marriage to an end. According to Arthashastra, marriage can end if dissolved by mutual consent and should be an approved marriage. But Manu does not believe in the concept of dissolution. According to Manu, the only way to end the marriage is death of one of the spouses. So, the provision related to the concept of divorce was not introduced by the Hindu Marriage Act 1955. The Hindu Marriage Act defines divorce as a dissolution of the marriage for the interest of the society, the marriage or the marital relationship needs to be surrounded by every safeguard for the cause specified by the law. Divorce is permitted only for a grave reason otherwise given other alternatives. So the next divorce under Hindu Marriage Act 1955. In the Hindu Marriage Act there are some provisions given regarding a valid divorce like example when the spouse can get divorce or a Appeal for dissolution of marriage in the court of law for the interest of the society, the marriage or the marital relationship needs to be surrounded by every safeguard for the cause specified by the law. Divorce is permitted only for a grave reason, otherwise given other alternatives as we discussed in my previous slide also. So Hindu Marriage Act is based on the fault theory in which any one of the agreed spouses according to section 13 clause 1 can approach the code of law and seek the remedy of divorce and section 13 clause 2 provides the grounds on which the only wife can approach the court of law and seek the remedy of divorce. So the next point is grounds of divorce as per the Hindu Marriage Act 1955. The first ground is adultery. The concept of adultery may not be considered as an offense in many countries. As per the Hindu Marriage Act in the matrimonial offense, the adulterer is considered as one of the most important ground for seeking divorce. Adultery means the consensual and voluntary intercourse between a married person with the another person. Married or unmarried of the opposite sex, even if the intercourse between the husband and his wife, like example, if their marriage is considered under bigamy, the person is liable for adultery. The concept of adultery was inserted under Hindu Marriage Act by the Marriage Laws Amendment Act 1976, there are certain case laws. I will be discussing, discussing the two case laws like the Sapna Ghosh vs. Sadanand Ghosh and the Satchidananda Chatterjee vs. Srimati Nilima Chatterjee. The first one is Sapna Ghosh vs. Sadanand Ghosh. In this case, uh, the wife found her husband with the other girl lying on the same bed and the neighbor also confirmed that the husband has committed an offence. Here the wife gets the divorce. And the second, Sachinanda Chatterjee versus Srimati Nilima Chatterjee. In this case, the petitioner and the defendant were married. After marriage, the husband left the wife in some hometown so that he can complete her studies and go to another city for work. He visited twice or thrice month to meet her. Later he found that his wife commits adultery, like example, involved in sexual intercourse with his own nephew and watchman etc. The plaintiff approaches the court to demand divorce on the ground of adultery and his wife is liable for it and the petition was accepted and the marriage gets dissolved. 
and the second point is cruelty the concept of cruelty includes mental as well as physical cruelty so the physical cruelty means one uh, when one person sp or spouse beats or causes any bodily injury to other spouse but the concept of mental cruelty was added as the spouse can also mentally tortured by the other spouse so there is a case balram prajapati versus sushila bai in this case the petitioner filed the divorce petition against wife on the ground of mental cruelty he proved that the wife that behavior with him and his parents was aggressive and uncontrollable and many times he filed the false complaint against her husband the court accept the petition and grants divorce on the ground of cruelty the third one is desertion uh, desertion means the permanent abandonment of one spouse by the other spouse without any reasonable justification and without his consent Uh, he desert from the society in general the rejection of obligation of marriage by one party uh, so there is a case bipin chandar jasin bhai versus uh, prabhavati in this in this case the respondent leaves the house with the intention to abandon his wife later the wife approaches the court but the defendant proved that even though he left the house with the intention to desert but he tried to come back and he was prevented from doing so by the petitioner here the defendant cannot be liable for desertion and uh, fourth one is conversion if one spouses converts his religion to any other religion without the consent of the other spouse then the other spouse can approach the court and seek the remedy of divorce uh, suppose example a him a is a hindu wife and uh, um, the two children are there one day a went to church and converted his christianity the with the consent of b here b can approach the court and seek divorce on the ground of conversion in there is a case uh, in uh, suresh babu versus leela in this case the husband converts himself to muslim and marries another woman here the wife leela filed a case and demanded divorce on the ground of conversion without her consent and cruelty and there is next one the insanity you all know the term insanity insanity means when person is of unsound mind uh, insanity is a ground of the divorce has the following two requirements first one respondent has been incurably of unsound mind and the second one the respondent has been suffering continuously from mental disorder of such kind and to such an extent that the petitioner cannot reasonably expected to live with the respondent so there is a next point is leprosy leprosy is a infectious and uh, disease of the skin so we all know this type of um, disease is so dangerous so thus it is considered as a valid ground for divorce then venereal disease under this com concept if the disease is communicable form and it can be transmitted to the other spouse then this can be considered as the valid ground for divorce and the uh, next one is renounces it means when one spouse decide to renounce it the world and walk on path of the god then the other spouse can approach the court and demand the divorce in this concept the party who renounces the world is considered as civil dead it is a typical hindu practice and considered as a valid ground for divorce and the next one is presumption of death in this case the person is presumed to have died if the family or friends of that uh, person does not hear any news about the person alive or dead for 7 years it is considered as the valid grounds for divorce but the burden of proof is on the person who demands the divorce then uh, there is a next concept of there the mutual divorce concept as per section 13 clause b the person can be filed the petition for the divorce by mutual consent of the both the parties if the parties want to dissolve their marriage as a mutual consent are required to wait for one year from the date of marriage they have to show that they are living separately for one or more year and able to live with one another so next slide i discuss the case laws you can go to the indian kanun or any other website and uh, research the case laws i also cited the dates of the cases so
In conclusion, we can say the Hindu Marriage Act 1955 provides various provisions regarding divorce. The Hindu Marriage Act defines divorce as a dissolution of marriage. The main three theories related to divorce are fault theory, mutual consent, and uh, irretrievable theory. So, in India, the fault theory works in the matter of divorce. Under this theory, marriage can be ended when one of the spouses is responsible or liable for the offense under matrimonial offenses. The innocent spouse can seek the remedy of divorce. Under the Hindu Marriage Act, the basic grounds on which the Hindu women can seek the remedy of divorce are adultery, desertion, conversion, leprosy, cruelty, etc. Whatever I mentioned in my presentation. So, but many philosophers criticize the concept of divorce. The Hindu married woman can also apply for the maintenance under section 125 of CRPC 1973. So, the spouse who is innocent can approach the court and can seek the remedy of divorce. Thank you everyone. That's it from my side.